All right, we get started. All right. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, Vitesse. I actually have some uh, Vitesse uh, stickers later in case you're interested. You can uh, come and collect them from me. Uh, so uh, my name is Sugu. Uh, I now have a new title. It's called uh, CTO for uh, Planet Scale Data. It's a new company that uh, we started recently uh, whose sole purpose is to uh, support the Vitesse project. I have my co-founder here, uh, Jiten, who's also sitting. And uh, uh, previously, uh, many of you probably know me as uh, the software engineer from uh, YouTube. I was at YouTube for uh, over 11 years, and that's where I co-created this project. Uh, it was around uh, 2010, and uh, have been working on it uh, since then. So uh, one disclaimer or warning is I may accidentally regress into thinking that I'm still at YouTube. So <laughs> if that happens, wake me up and remind me that that's not the case anymore. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of problems uh, that uh, have been growing uh, in the MySQL uh, industry. So whenever I say MySQL, assume the base class, uh, MariaDB and all other variants of MySQL. Uh, sometimes you can even like abstract it out to any RDBMS. Uh, so uh, the one problem uh, that uh, has been growing with uh, uh, MySQL instances uh, is that they all run only on one uh, one box. Uh, like when uh, about like this, it's been now eight years when we started the Vitesse project. Uh, we thought we were actually solving this problem for the big companies like Facebooks and Twitters. Uh, because uh, they are the ones who have a lot of data and they need to shard in everything. But uh, over the years, what we have noticed is that uh, even small, tiny companies uh, are beginning to outgrow their single MySQL instance almost in uh, no time. And uh, this is actually, this, we should have actually seen this coming. Uh, people have been talking about data exploding, big data, and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, now it's really affecting... Um, uh, the choices that, pe that people are making about uh, storage solutions. Uh, often they are looking at MySQL and they are thinking, um, is this going to carry me all the way if my business grows suddenly in leaps and bounds or if I suddenly need to store a lot more data, will I be able to uh, continue to work with MySQL? And some of them are actually looking at other alternatives, like what else is out there if it is uh, not MySQL? And uh, I will talk about uh, some of the choices that I've seen people making. Uh, and uh, we basically, I think we need to fix this problem. And Vitesse is actually uh, trying to help there. And uh, the other big trend, obviously, is that the cloud is here. And pretty much most RDBMSs are kind of left behind, uh, mainly because uh, uh, culturally or traditionally, they are all built to run on a single machine. They have the whole machine for themselves and they, they have all the resources there. But in this new container world, uh, you are supposed to live within the smaller box that you are given. Uh, and those containers don't stay up for six months or, and stuff like that. They go out, they go down any time they like. Uh, like uh, cloud environments like to move your instance all over the place. And uh, you, are, you don't have the whole box anymore. Sometimes. Uh, somebody else starts doing a lot of I.O. and uh, you are short in bandwidth. And uh, the fact that all this is happening changes the way your application has to work with the database. You cannot have these config files and static IPs that you use to connect to the database anymore. Uh, you need to have a more uh, dynamic, uh, discoverable uh, API that applications have to use to connect to the databases. And the other player now that uh, you are now hearing more about or will hear more about is Kubernetes, which is now pretty much uh, being uh, seen as the future operating system of distributed uh, applications. And, uh, and there is actually no solution uh, right now. There are some people working on operators and stuff to run uh, RDBMSs in Kubernetes, but right now, uh, there is no good solution if you just have a single MySQL instance just to move it there. So these are some of the problems. And the cloud problem actually aggravates uh, the previous problem of the transactional data exploding. 
and uh, is kind of you uh, many people are uh, like almost feeling stuck with mysql so what do i do with this thing right so fear not there is uh, there are ways out <laughs> that's what i'm here to talk about and uh, so here are some of the uh, solutions that people have used when they find that they have outgrown their single instance mysql by far the most common one is application sharding and it is now becoming the least favorite option option because one it requires your application to be rewritten and it means that you need additional engineering effort to be able to do this and uh, the second problem which is even worse is you have to live with it for the rest of your life uh, <laughs> that is actually now the problem that companies are beginning to feel and so, some of these companies are not really core technology companies they are like a retail shop and uh they are like a phone application and stuff they do this application level sharding and now they have this uh debt or burden that they have to carry and uh, sometimes your shards outgrow a single instance then you have to reshard and they don't even know how to do that right so there are various challenges with uh, application sharding and some people have said just, just forget all this just let's go to nosql at least it will scale uh, we'll deal with every every other uh, problem that uh comes up with no sequel but at least we won't be stuck uh staying in one box there are also some paid solutions which i won't talk much about since it's an open source conference and they are also actually not all perfect uh that's all uh, i can say for now if you uh, can later come and talk to me about what solutions there are and uh, what problems they have uh there is actually a newer category that uh, is called new sequel i'm sure you've all heard of it uh cockroach tidb and yugabyte are uh, uh, some new companies that are actually building a ground up uh, sql scalable solution uh, the main uh, the main uh, drawback is actually a time problem is that they are all new uh, they are just beginning to uh, get their first versions of sql running and uh, uh, if you look at mysql it's been tuned for over like what 20 years now and uh, these people are, are where mysql was like approximately 20 years ago so it'll be a while before they get there but they will uh, if they have enough uh, financial backing they they will uh, eventually get there but right now uh, it may not be immediately be, uh, possible to uh, go into production with them it's a kind of my opinion obviously these companies are here uh, they will probably uh, help you go to production to the extent that they can and uh, uh, the other uh, problem is that uh, these companies uh, some of these companies have a uh, open source uh, offering and a commercial offering and there is uh, we don't know whether you can just take the open source and uh, run with it in production yet so there is uh, there's not enough data to know that that is possible or whether it it uh, there are examples whether there are any examples that exist so those are uh, some of the pro things that i see with the new sequel but it's definitely something to um, uh, watch out for so at this point um, today if i have to make a data decision uh, it feels the way i see it is these are all um, inferior solutions to what my sequel can do for you so functionally if you look at mysql and what it can do for you you move away from that and come into this you are actually downgrading in terms of functionality right uh, and what why are you doing it you are doing it only because you have to scale so the obvious question is why not both <laughs> so that's basically what we test tries to do is uh, gives you all the functionality and power that mysql has but at the same time you can keep scaling indefinitely so why is uh, why to uh, vitas uh, 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 capable of giving you both is because underneath it just runs mysql um, you basically if you have a mysql you deploy vitas on top of it and then afterwards you can reshard your database without the application knowing much about it and uh, how big can we get with mysql it's pretty big uh, we call it massive scale uh, which uh, is a pretty large uh actually i was talking to uh, yoshinori earlier that's what he defines uh, yoshinori is from facebook he defines uh, that as a medium scale but we call it massive scale because we call it oh we can go to tens of thousands of nodes <laughs> so um 
But the cool stuff is that it is open source and we have been working on it for eight years now. Uh, so a lot of time and effort has been spent to make it, uh, to make the project production viable. You can take what is available in Vitesse, take it to production and scale it to millions of QPS and it will run for you, no problem. And uh, uh, for the longest time, YouTube was the only uh, company that was using Vitesse. Uh, but now we have a very large, uh, not very large, a decent number of companies, but running at very large scale. Uh, some of them are, uh, many of them are running uh, six-digit uh, QPS in their instances. And many of the companies have completely rely on Vitesse uh, for, their, uh, for all their data, which is uh, super exciting. And uh, which companies are using Vitesse? Here is a list. Uh, there is actually more. These are the companies that have given us permission to use their logos. Um, as you can see, there is a name you may not recognize, which is JD.com. Uh, but uh, it's because it's, uh, it's a Chinese portal. It turns out that they are the second largest portal in China uh, after Alibaba. And uh, they've completely migrated their business over to Vitesse. Uh, they run over uh, 300 key spaces or databases, and uh, they run, uh, again, uh, comfortably six-digit QPS. You have uh, Slack, uh, which has actually made a major commitment, both in terms of engineering effort and operations, uh, and uh, they have actually contributed a lot to the project, too. They are in the process of migrating uh, to Vitesse. There are actually plenty of talks that Slack has given. We even have uh, Guido here. Uh, who was uh, uh, working uh, on uh, that migration. There's a few others. There's HubSpot and Squire. Um, Squire, for example, uses, uh, is uh, using um, Vitesse for their Square Cache application, and they're already sharded. They started with a single shard and then deployed Vitesse and started resharding it. Um, but the more important thing here is if you see, there are some names you will not recognize. These are actually pretty small companies, uh, but they have huge data. Many of them, again, uh, run uh, pretty large QPS. And uh, this is an indication of what is coming, uh, how the industry is changing. Uh, it's not the YouTubes anymore that require massive scalability. Uh, there are some small companies probably that have never heard of Vitas, and they probably went to the route that uh, you chose some of the routes that I showed before. Uh, and, but I think there are a lot more companies that are coming up that are going to require big data and are going to wonder, can I go to MySQL? Will it scale for me uh, when I need to? And at least Vites is there to uh, take care of them when that situation comes. There's actually a third kind of uh, need that we are beginning to see. Many of these big companies like uh, Pinterest, Twitter, they already have sharded. They already have sharded solutions. but um, their secondary databases is beginning to grow, and they need sharding uh, for those uh, databases. And many of them are saying, oh, I don't want to go through this application sharding exercise anymore. And some of them are actually coming to Vitesse to see if uh, they can actually deploy Vitesse on top of their MySQL instance and uh, do the sharding. So far, so good? All right. <clears throat> So what does uh, Vitesse do? Actually, this slide uh, usually takes me one hour to cover if I drill down into all the stuff that Vitesse can do. Like eight years of development, you can develop a lot of things uh, in that time. Uh, the one thing, the, uh, so I've categorized it into three parts. The one thing that Vitesse will do is make your MySQL happier. So if you're running uh, tens of thousands of nodes, uh, simple tasks that you usually expect a human can do should not be done by a human because uh, if problems appear at that scale, it's very hard to manage. So many of that thing about uh, query mediation, uh, making sure that queries run, don't run for too long, making sure that transactions uh, don't run for too long are all built into uh, the proxy that uh, uh, Vitesse has. If there is a sudden overload, uh, Vitesse can take care of throttling it throwing away, throwing errors to the application saying, I'm overloaded, I'm not accepting any more transactions. So all those things are built into Vitesse. Uh, the other thing is, this actually uh, um, uh, interesting story. Uh, 
Vitesse was originally, in 2010, we built it for actually bare metal. We were running in YouTube, YouTube's own data centers. And at some point of time, we, we had to migrate to Google's uh, Borg Cloud. So if you are a Google, how many of you have, uh, have worked at Google before? Oh, there you go. So if you write an application, oh, you, <laughs> Mark himself. <laughs> so if you write an um, application that runs on Google Cloud, it's pretty much guaranteed that the application cannot be open sourced because the Google ecosystem is so unique and uh, there are so many internal uh, dependencies. Uh, they are such that if you write an application in Google Cloud, you cannot open source it. So we had an uh, interesting reverse problem is we have an open source project that runs on bare metal and we have to make that run into uh, Google's cloud. So how, do we, how did we do that? We basically built an abstraction layer for every Google Cloud feature that we had to integrate with and uh, uh, saved this open source project and fought for that being for remaining open source. We'll say, we'll do whatever it takes to build these abstractions to make sure that we test runs in the cloud, but we want to keep this project as an open source project. So it was kind of hard, but we succeeded. But it paid off. The, the, the reason why it paid off is because when Kubernetes came, we were ready for it. We said, oh, cloud, no problem. You just build all these uh, other pieces, put them together. We are ready for the cloud. So uh, and uh, right now, uh, many of those companies that I showed you actually run on Kubernetes, run on the cloud, run on Docker. I mean, for the longest time, people were wondering, can MySQL run on Docker? We do huge QPS uh, on Docker, some of, some of these people. GKE, AWS, um, uh, Kubernetes, AWS, Mesos, Azure, like you take all these things, combine them differently, there's probably a configuration there that uh, Vitas runs on. And finally, icing on the cake is it's indefinitely scalable, so you don't have to worry about that part. And even in the indefinitely scalable part, uh, the, the, you can say indefinitely scalable, but the important part is that you don't have to rewrite your entire application to uh, be able to scale it. Because um, all the queries that you send to MySQL, uh, uh, to send to Vitesse, it will figure out how to break it up and send it to different parts and get you the results back as if it was a unified database. Yes? I will answer that question on my next slide. <laughs> and uh, the other part is that uh, even if you, once, you, once you have sharded your system and later you suddenly realize that you're running out of capacity and you want to reshard, uh, there are workflows that will do this for you with application notice, noticing absolutely no change at all. Uh, we do this, uh, YouTube does this. Uh, multiple times, like two to three times, uh, uh, like uh, every two to three months, they do a resharding, major resharding. Uh, and uh, we used to make big announcements before. Now nobody tells anyone anything. They just go and reshard it, and um, there's usually never any issues. So this is the uh, MySQL, this is the Vitesse architecture. So the most important part of this architecture is uh, the VT gate. Uh, the VT gate speaks the MySQL protocol. And uh, the app server, instead of connecting to, to MySQL, just connects to VT gate and uh, nothing else. Uh, after that, it just treats the VT gate that it's connected to as a giant database. Except that underneath, it's actually a bunch of smaller databases. And uh, this architecture, actually, I can spend a lot of time. We really, really like it. Each and every one of these pieces plays a very important role. Uh, in this whole thing, uh, especially for example, the lock server um, is the one that makes it possible to, uh, for Vitesse to run in the cloud so comfortably. I'm going to rush because I will be soon running out of time and I wanted to cover a couple more things. I wanted to cover uh, the pluggable architecture I've already covered. Um, it's actually the, the most important thing that we had to take care of while making this architecture pluggable is to not compromise on performance. So in spite of all this pluggability, Vitesse's uh, latency is still pretty low. It adds about um, two milliseconds as total overhead to uh, your uh, database. But then you get uh, this indefinite scalability. And uh, uh, in terms of project, I, I wanted to cover how we manage the project uh, because that's actually the best part the, the reason why I 
keep wanting to go up, go back and keep working on this project is because we have maintained very high standards in this project uh, to the extent that some people get irritated, especially uh, when we start insisting on, uh, insisting on unit tests and uh, strict code coverage requirements. They are like, do I have to do all this? I don't care. This thing people are going to take and run into production. Every code that you write that is going to serve a query, it has to be tested, it has to be covered, and if needed, you need to write end-to-end -end tests also. And so we followed this discipline from uh, day one and uh, have been very strict about it. Um, all coding standards are enforced. We have all kinds of CI tools that make sure that you don't break those things. And uh, if your code is not readable, we don't even take your uh, pull requests. So, um, but then um, that has actually uh, caused over time some really very high quality contributions to the project. And uh, this is... Uh, Big news that's coming, CNCF actually is going to accept Vitesse as one of its uh, uh, projects. Uh, it's actually pretty much a done deal. The official announcement is happening tomorrow. Uh, so uh, uh, keep watching uh, various blog posts. Uh, the, uh, see, they took uh, CNCF a long time to accept Vitesse, uh, almost a year. And the reason is because they could not find a project similar to Vitesse. They, they could not find anything else to compare it with because in reality there isn't uh, one right now. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, they just couldn't. And uh, uh, so they, they did a lot of due diligence. They, uh, they interviewed all many users. Uh, they looked at maturity. They looked at contributors. And then uh, finally said, yeah, it's right. Uh, there is no project like Vitesse, but it's awesome. It really does what it is supposed to do. And uh, uh, after all the due diligence, we are now reaching the end. Uh, tomorrow we'll be accepted in uh, CNCF, which means that C uh, Vitesse will get to benefit from uh, all the cool stuff that CNCF has. Personally, for me, the reason why I'm excited is because until today, um, Vitesse was always seen as a YouTube project. But now it's becoming a truly community-owned project. Uh, so I'm uh, hoping that this will attract more uh, contributors and attention in terms of uh, adoption. So in terms of roadmap, Vitesse is not perfect. Uh, but so there are still things that need to be done. So if you, uh, if you are a good open source person, if you, are, if you know query engines, if you know things like that, we would like to welcome your contributions. The one place where Vitesse is short on is uh, 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 some cross shard queries, it says, sorry, I can't handle it. It does most of them, but not all of them. Uh, if you do some complex aggregation with ordering and sorting, it says, uh, please rewrite your query in such a way that I can do it. Uh, so uh, help with migration tools and configurability, those are the areas that we think we need to uh, focus on. Uh, in conclusion, the main message is, uh, if you are hesitating about using MySQL, because it cannot scale, don't worry about it. We have it covered. And there is plenty of examples of people having scaled uh, with Vitesse uh, at really, really uh, large scales. Uh, I was actually telling somebody else today, if somebody came and if your engineer came and told you, I want to store 100 terabytes of data, what would you tell them? Oh, is there a way you can prune it? Is there a way you can reduce it? Say, no, don't worry. Say, Bring it on. <laughs> we'll take care of it, you know? So that's, that's the kind of attitude we should have when people uh, come to us for storing data. Or running in the cloud is also not a problem. And finally, uh, help build Vitesse because uh, it's an awesome tool. Yeah. That's it. Thank you very much.